So with Chris Forrester to look back on today's FAI Cup first round draw, we'll be at home to Waterford in the extra .ie FAI Cup with the first round to be played week ending July 31st. Chris, thoughts on the draw, please? Yeah, it's a decent enough draw. Um, home, home game is the most important thing, I think, about it. We'll have our own fans there uh, backing us. So, yeah, most importantly, it's the home draw. That's all that counts. Yeah, first time being back at home in the Cup since we won the Cup as well. So hopefully a big crowd and a good night at Richmond. Yeah, like you said, we're, we're the holders, so, you know, we want to go into it um, full of confidence and, you know, hopefully retain it. Um, again, Richmond will be packed out that night, um, like it always is most weeks. Um, so, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Waterford, of course, relegated last year, but they're performing quite well in the first division, making a push towards the playoffs, at least, if not to try and catch the teams at the top. So, it definitely won't be an easy one. No, yeah, I think they might have retained a few of the players from last year. Um, they'd had, had a good few players last year. Um, and like you said, they're doing well down in the first division. So, you know, they'll come up and they want to put on a show themselves and they want to advance in the cup. Of course, today brings back really happy memories of that famous day at the Aviva Stadium last November when we beat Bowles in the final on penalties. You scored in the game, of course. What stands out for you most about the day looking back now? Um, just to get to celebrate it with my family. Um, you know, they were all there and, you know, it was amazing for them to be there. And, you know, obviously then for the deal for the club as well is a massive part of it. Um, yeah, the goal, the penalty miss, everything, everything kind of is always refreshed in my mind. Um, the whole day was just it was spectacular, to be fair. Yeah, on the family first, your kids were there, your missus was there. There's some great pictures of you celebrating with them directly after the, the final whistle as well and after the kind of couple of years lockdown and not many fans in to do it in front of almost 40,000. But to have your nearest and dearest with you was really special. Yeah, it was it's the most important part of my life um, is your family. Uh, so to have them there watching me, score a good goal and then you know lift the trophy and then get to bring the trophy to them while they were in the stands and stuff was, was just unbelievable um it's a day i don't think anyone anyone in the family will really forget um so yeah it was it was perfect it was a perfect day yeah the goal was fantastically described by ortiz des curran as a goal for the ages what do you remember about it when you picked up the ball in midfield and raced towards their goal I remember gasping for her because it was pretty late in the game. But um, no, I remember just receiving it, um, getting a touch past Key Buckley and then just kind of driving towards the goal and it kind of opened up then. Struck it, cramped up, hopefully, and just prayed that I went in uh, and then tried to celebrate, to stop the lads from jumping on me. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a good goal. Um, I was happy to get it, but you know, it was more important just to win the game rather than my own accolades. The strike was brilliant, but the touch and the movement for the touch probably gets overlooked a little bit given the strike from distance and stuff, the way you just took a pass Bucko, having done that great piece with him as well on the 42 during the week to take a pass your old teammate, and that was a, a brilliant start to the move. Yeah, it was. It was nice. It's, you know, as a footballer, it's something you have, you're practising every day. It's like torn and receiving the ball and stuff like that. So it was kind of years of practice kind of coming to fruition and, you know, the rest kind of looked after itself once you do that. So I went to penals, you were first up and... You missed it. What were you thinking then? Thankfully, we went on to win. Robbie Benson got the winner, but when you when you missed, and you looked absolutely good at obviously. Yeah, I was I was scared for the team and for myself. Yeah, you know, didn't want to be the one that you know caused caused Pats to lose the cup or whatever. Um, and after just been on such a high from scoring the goal and you know to go down from a hero to zero would have been pretty harsh. But uh, you know the, the lads backed me up and you know they dug me out. So. We, we got there in the end like you said yeah my favorite picture from the day is the moment that we know we've won and the lads who, who weren't taking the pen out when Robbie scored like Ian Birmingham's already nearly crying you can see the emotion in Lee's face all of you really what was that exact second like when Robbie Benson scored and you knew we'd won the cup it was just a relief especially for me because I I'd initially missed the first pen out I thought this is it I'm gonna be the one that loses it for us uh, and then Robbie steps up scores the penalty, and you're just thinking what a relief, you know, you can just enjoy it now, the, the day is, you know, it's just about celebrating, uh, going and seeing your family, lifting that trophy, being with the fans, uh, yeah, you just get, you, it's just enjoyment after that, you know, the, the 90 minutes or the 120 minutes, whatever it was, uh, it's just agony, you're just trying to get the, get, the, get the game over the line and, you know, get the hands on the cup at the end of the day. How do you reflect on that night and the following day in McDowell's and in Temple Bar and, as you mentioned, friends, family, fans and that huge relief to have won and been able to celebrate with everybody. Yeah, it was great. The great celebrations back in the Red Cow uh, with all the fans. Fans are there. Ended up in Diva uh, dancing the night away. Um, even got a, a bit of a karaoke from Birmingham on the DJ. 
off on the uh, on the DJ deck. So yeah, it was good. It was, the celebrations were amazing. You know, that's what it's all about. Then going and joining with the people that you have spent the whole season with, um, the fans who've backed you all season, and obviously a family who are always supportive of you. So it was great to just celebrate with all them, and you know, just be just be thankful for, to be in the moment. And the last seven months as well, we've done a real roadshow with the trophy from into local hospitals and nursing homes to local schools and local youth groups as well. And it's proudly on display in Richmond every week when we're playing at the moment too. And it's been a really nice seven months. How have you enjoyed it just being a bit out and about and, and seeing what that trophy means to so many people who've been at many of the events yourself? Yeah, it's good. It uh, obviously means a lot to a lot of people. Um, like I said, it's the day was over for us and we celebrated. And then, like you said, we're back in and now we're back in the cup competition wanting to retain it. Uh, but like you said, you, you've been going around to places, schools and, you know, just meeting random people and they want to make pictures with the trophy and it means a lot to them and you can see what it means to the fans and stuff. So yeah, that's that's obviously a nice touch that you can bring that bit of happiness to them and, you know, just getting to hold the trophy, little kids getting to hold the trophy is, is an amazing feeling for them. Um, but we're fully focused now on being back in the competition, you know, we want to we want that again. It's been a good seven months, but... You know, there's, there's no point in it. You're going to get knocked down the first round this week or whenever the, the game is on. Uh, we want to feel that again. And I think as a player, it's what you need to be striving for. Yeah, we announced ticket details as well and fixture details as soon as we can on simpatsfc.com. Back to matters on the pitch, Chris. We're just getting ready for the second half of the season. It began with a 3 0 win against UCD on Friday evening and sitting fourth at the table, three points off third. How do you reflect on the, the first half and I suppose looking ahead to what's going to be a busy few months? Yeah, I think. First half of the season, not probably we probably left ourselves a bit shortchanged. Um, I think there's a lot more potential in us. Um, you know, the lads continue to work hard behind the scenes and stuff like that. So it's it's a it's an effort that's going in the right direction. I think, and that's all you can really ask for. Um, in terms of second half of the season, we'll be we'll be looking to push on, get into them European places, and then you know see where it takes us from there. And um, we have the cup competition, which will be fully focused on as well so um, yeah I think it's promising for the second half of the season especially getting that 3 no win the other night you know we can build on that and Europe to look forward to as well we'll be either in Moldova or Slovenia we'll know that in a, in a few weeks with their first round tie as well it's been a while since the club has been in Europe and I'm sure you're all quite excited when you watch the draw last week to see who we're going to play yeah very excited um, you know it's like you said I haven't been there in a few years the last time I think I was there with Pats was in Sweden um, yeah, so it's it's always a great occasion, and you know, again, the fans will travel. It's a great occasion for them, and you know, for us, it's it's a a chance to go and challenge yourself against teams in Europe, and you know, see how far you can get. And you know, it's 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 a good occasion. Your own role in the team, you've been wearing the captain's armband a lot this season, and a lot of your midfield partners are are really really young. In the case of Adam O'Reilly, who's been playing with you for for so long, you know, just turned twenty. Ben McCormack, still a teenager. Adam Murphy, when he made his debut, still a teenager as well. I'm sure there's, there's other, others too. How do you describe your own role and, and how it's evolving, especially with the, the youthfulness of the players maybe directly around you? Yeah, it's probably just being a bit more um, mature around the place and you know trying to ease the lads in because, like you said, we have a lot of young players at the team. Um, so they're, they're finding their way and you can see them they're gradually getting more confident and how to carry themselves around the training ground and you know even on game days. They're reacting better, they're, they're playing better, and it's 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 nice to watch the progression, to be fair. Um, I think we have a lot of young players that have massive potential, and I think the sooner the better they realise that, and it's kind of at the older people's job to kind of help them ease them into that natural like realisation. So I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm not a young kid anymore, so it's, it's a different role, obviously, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I really enjoyed doing the home games for LOI TV, the commentaries, and actually being able to hear the insights on the pitch and the information that you're giving to the young boys. You know, Sam Curtis at 16 has played seven games in a row. You have James at Bank, where you have even Dara Burns, who's experienced now, played over 50 games, but still only a kid. And you, you must love that role of, of helping them on the pitch too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, seeing, seeing young lads fulfil the potential is, is a massive plus for any player playing with that when you're playing with them. Um, and like I said, these lads, the young boys on the team have massive potential. Um, there's so many of them as well. Um, and it's, it is, it's really, it's really great to be a part of the journey. And, you know, some of them may end up wherever they end up. Um, and you can, on one side, you can say, I played with them. And I, I helped them along his way. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. Yeah, and it's just pleasing to watch them grow every week. And lastly, back to SSE or Tricity League action on Friday. Long trip to Bally Buffet to face Finn Harps in a derby against Rovers on Monday. So, busy league, uh, weekend in the league, starting with Harps and then the derby. Yeah, uh, two big games uh, in terms of where we want to be at. 
Um, going to Ballybuffet Buffet is never easy. Um, we'll go up there, we'll, we'll try our best and you know, hopefully get the three points then back home for Rovers on the Monday. Um, another massive game, great team. Um, so it's not a game that we'll be taking for granted. We'll, we'll be looking to get all six points, I suppose. Yeah, Chris, of course, scored the winner against Rovers last time at Richmond. That game, tickets on sale now on simpatsfc.com. It will sell out, so if you haven't got one, go there now and get your ticket for the Derby on Monday, and we'll see a few of you as well up in Donegal on Friday. Chris, thanks a million, and we'll chat to you soon. Thank you very much. Come on, Chris.